we're starting a new series that we're going to be talking about for about the next two to three weeks, about three weeks. And uh, I'm dealing with a subject, and it's probably one of the hardest subjects to deal with when it comes to Christian people. And it's about forgiveness. And uh, the series is going to be entitled, When Forgiveness Hurts. And today we're dealing with, does God always expect me to forgive? We'll be in the book, a little small, short book called Philemon. I wonder this morning if you have someone that you need to forgive. Um, Could it be that you've been hurt someplace in time in life? I think we could probably all say yes to that. Or maybe someone spoke an ugly word to you at at some inappropriate time that you were going through a particular trial in your life. I mean, maybe today you've been treated in an unfair and a selfish and hurtful way in life. We many times cluster all this stuff together through life, and we just hold on to it. Maybe today you need to forgive because someone violated your sense of loyalty. I mean, there's a lot of things here that we could deal with. Here's the question among all questions today, though, that when we deal with this subject. Are you struggling to forgive others? Because, you know, you can pack this stuff back in your heart and your mind, and actually time nurtures it because you're not willing to let it go. Why should you let someone off the hook after what they've done to you. And I mean, I've had people tell me that. Hey, you can, how can you forgive somebody when they have been so malicious or they've hurt you so deeply or they've left scars that you feel like you can't get past? Do you wonder if God, do you really think God expects you to forgive people? The question is asked, why should we forgive you know, we play, find places in our life that we struggle to forgive someone else of a particular infraction that they uh, brought about in our lives. And then there's that other issue, too, that maybe we need to s- seek forgiveness because maybe we were the person that perpetrated that, that particular item or thing that happened. Also today, you know... It, Forgiveness is just not trying to give forgiveness. Also, forgiveness is seeking forgiveness. So how do you seek forgiveness? You know, I'm throwing a lot of questions at you. What does real repentance look like? You know, we're willing to repent of the sins. You know, we told a lie or we did something or whatever. We We can reel those things off real quick in repentance. But how do you handle when there's an issue of forgiveness involved around that? It seems like we kind of push that over to the side. We don't deal with it as we should. So, you know, Jesus deals with a tough issue here from God's Word, and realizing that the Word of God has the answer. This is not a clinical thing. This is not something you need to go talk to a psychiatrist about. You just need to talk to the Lord about it, because He has the answers. So, realizing this, in the process of forgiveness, repentance becomes a very vital part of what God does in that particular situation. Forgiveness ranks, listen to this, forgiveness ranks near the top of the things that we are most graceful, uh, grateful to receive, but near the bottom of the things that we're willing to give. We like to receive it, but are we willing to give it? And folks, I'm gonna tell you, it's it's a crucial part. This, This shadows the cross. Forgiveness is really what the cross is about. You know, we think, well, salvation's at the cross. Well, how do you get salvation? It's through the forgiveness that Jesus offers, right? Hallelujah. So forgiveness is a wonderful idea unless you're the one that has to do it. (laughs) That's kind of the way that we look at it. So the theme of Philemon today is forgiveness is not just something we receive from God. Forgiveness is something that God wants you and I to share with others. So that's real important, that we are instruments. And sometimes, you know, you're sitting and you're waiting. Well, I'm just going to wait till that person says something to me. You know what? You may wait for an eternity. Sometimes you've got to be the aggressor. And it's not that you're dredging up things. And you don't go to people dredging up, so you know how you did this to me and blah, blah, blah. And you go through all the, all the uh, framework of the speech that you have formulated in your mind 
It's not about that. Sometimes you just need to go to people and say, listen, let's bear the axe and the handle. We've had conflicts. It's not, it's not important that we talk about the conflict. It's important that we talk about the solution to the conflict. And the solution to the conflict is spelled forgiveness. And you know, you say, well, preacher, what do you do if they don't forgive you? Or they're not willing to be a part of it. Then, folks, you have done everything that you can humanly, physically, spiritually do to try to bring a peace in that situation. I have really gotten on this, you know, those saying a bee in your bonnet. Well, I don't wear a bonnet, but I've really got a, 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 I really got a real heartbeat for this. Because the word says that we are to be at peace with all people. And folks, if we're not, then guess what? You're in conflict with people. And we're quick to rehearse about what people have done or said or whatever. You know, I've gone through some things of recent and things that people had said. And you know, sometimes those pills are hard to swallow, aren't they? But boy, I'm going to tell you what happened. And I'm not going to go into a long story here because I don't have time. God really has dealt with my heart about that. And I released the people from what they did. Forgave them and forgot about it. So no longer control because to me, when I stand before the Lord, I don't want no blemishes on my record. And I sure don't want any blemishes on my record as far as my relationship with other people. So the theme is forgiveness. But what does real repentance, what does real forgiveness look like today? Why then is forgiveness so important? Why does God put so much emphasis on it? Well, there are three good reasons I'm going to give to you over the next few moments that should be at the top of, uh, of a priority list in our spiritual life today. Number one is forgiveness is the expectation of God. God expects you to do that. Well, we expect God to forgive us. We go to the Lord. God, I'm so sorry. I committed this sin. I did this thing. I said that word. I, whatever. And we're so, we're so intense on getting God to forgive us. Well, let me tell you what. On the other side of the coin, God is intense about you forgiving others too. So the book of Philemon is a really a masterful example today of understanding how God's blessings in our lives bring them and comes with certain responsibility that we've got to be conscious of and take action about today. So Philemon is a letter written by the Apostle Paul. And he's writing it to a friend. His name is Philemon. Philemon was a follower of Jesus Christ who had lived in Coloss. And, uh, and in all probability, probably Paul led him to the Lord. So the letter concerned some issues that a friend of his that was... Basically, he was a slave and had left the uh, issues and had encountered Paul in prison. And so through that process, the letter presents then Paul uh, sending back to Philemon about this issue to make things right. And so this letter is not about slavery in the sense that we think of, uh, that history has dictated to us. But it's about one Christian forgiving another Christian. So we have to learn that process. So realizing that the heart of Paul's encouragement is this. Forgiveness is what God expects of his children. Let me say that again. Forgiveness is what God expects. There's an expectation that's wrapped around this that God has pertaining for forgiveness. You can't flip this off. You can't just say, well, I, I'm, just, I'm not going to deal with that in the Bible. You, you can't. This is, the word of God is not a cafeteria line. You can't pick, choose, and decide or declare what you want or don't want. Philemon 8 and 9 says, Wherefore, uh, though I might be, made, uh, be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I'd rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul, the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. So Paul was saying, you know, I could make you do what is expected. Yet, Paul's appeal to him was on the basis of love. It was, not, it was not browbeating. It was in the process of appealing to the process of love. If we say that we have the love of God in us, then forgiveness should be a part or byproduct of that love that we possess. 
So Paul is saying forgiveness is the right thing to do because God expects it from us. Forgiveness is when, listen to this, it's when we release people from their obligation to us that was created by some hurtful word or action. Now you and I have been around long enough that we've probably been on both sides of the, of the court here. We've probably been the one that needed it, and we've maybe been the one that's given it. So, you know, maybe we're the one that did the hurtful thing, or maybe we had the hurtful thing done to us. So it's not always what people have done to us. And I'm going to tell you something else on a side note of that. It's never right to retaliate. I don't care what happened. I don't care what occurred. It's never right. Getting even is not in and a part of your life today. So when we forgive, we acknowledge what has been wronged, and we also choose not to dwell on the justice. We are willing to release the offender from the obligation that is associated with it. So the need to forgive others when they hurt us is really paramount in and according to the Word of God. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. So Jesus teaches us some things and throughout the pages of God's Word. Matthew uh, 6, 12 says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. They're not talking about your finances here. <laughs> They're talking about the things that we do and commit. Ephesians, Paul wrote in Ephesians 4 and 32, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as, uh, as, as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So when we have been forgiven much, God wants us to forgive much. And you think about it, since you've been saved, how much has God forgiven you of? I mean, could you, could you really phantom the list of how, maybe how long it is? Because you know what? Just because you're a Christian does not mean you're perfect. You still sin. And thank God, though, he is willing to forgive those sins. And cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Matthew 18, Peter came to the Lord and he asked, he said, Lord, how oft, how oft shall uh, my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Well, Jesus responded back in verse 22. He says, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Wow. Jesus is saying it's not about the number Today, that you should forgive as he said, you should do it as often as necessary. So realizing that today when sin, when why sin against God today repeatedly yet, what does God do? What does God do? The Bible says he forgives us. So going back to Matthew 18. 23 through 25, let me read it to you. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which, should, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had, to, had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, his wife, his children, and all that he had, and payment was made. The servant therefore fell down, and worship him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will repay all. Now, the man stated he had a debt. Let's just give a little summary here. He had a debt he couldn't pay. And his master forgave the debt. Wow, that's something to praise the Lord about. Amen. How, how would you like for your, all your debtor, all those people you're in debt with to write your letter and say, You don't owe us nothing. Amen. Boy, y'all would like that, wouldn't you? Amen. I'd like it too. This is a picture, though, of God's gracious forgiveness that he offers for us, who by grace pays for what we cannot pay for ourselves. So realizing today, Jesus paid it all for us at the cross. We had a debt we couldn't pay. He paid a debt that he didn't know. So God forgives us regardless of the depth of our sin. The bad part is sometimes we just keep piling sin on top of sin. Now you got more to deal with. So the story in Matthew 8, though, uh, 18, rather, is not over. There's more to this story than that. So let's go back to it. 23 through uh, 28. Let's pick up at 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hand on him and took him by the throat. That's getting kind of vicious, isn't it? Saying, pay me that thou owest. 
In other words, pay up, sucker. Amen. You know, uh, we're going to have the we're going to have the gang come by your place, and we're going to deal with you. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay thee all. Kind of sounds like a repeat of what happened to the other guy, right? And he would not, but went out and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Well, how is he going to pay the debt when he's in prison? I mean, that makes no sense. So when his fellow servants, I mean, they don't give you a lot there, do they? So, I mean, you get those three hot dogs a day, and that's about it. So when his fellow servants saw that what was done... They were very sorry and came and told, uh, and, and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Should not thou also have compassion on this fellow servant, even, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was worth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brothers their trespasses. So if you've been forgiven much, here's what it all comes down to. If you've been forgiven much, then God expects you to forgive much. Second point. Forgiveness is an example of our growth. Forgiveness is the example of spiritual growth and what maturity actually in the Christian looks like today. If you really want to grow in your spirituality today, then you've got to place some principles into practice today. Principles today are very important. Philemon number one, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, Timothy, our brother, and to Philemon, our dearly beloved, and our fellow laborers. So Paul had a powerful testimony that had influenced a lot of people. We know the story of the Apostle Paul's life. Philemon was a very effective servant for the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you go to verse 2 and it says, and to our, to our beloved Aptha and uh, or Chippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. They were watching along with the church the conflict that Philemon was having with this other fellow, and if he would be forgiving. I, I'm going to tell you something. The world is watching you on how you handle situations in your life. Just not on the point that you get in your car and come to church. Just not in the point that you try to live a Christian life. They're also watching you of how do you handle the responsibility of forgiveness. So it is one thing to talk about forgiveness of God, but it's another thing to put that forgiveness into practice in our lives. So verse 3 says, Grace be to you and peace from our God and our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. So Philemon was using a kind way to respond to, uh, Paul was using a kind way to respond to Philemon to not mess up. He was saying, don't mess up this reconciliation. Don't mess it up. And folks, you've got to be careful. It's a very tedious process in reconciliation. Because I'm going to tell you what your flesh is going to do. Your flesh is going to want to raise up, rear up, and speak up. And what you've got to do, you've got to let the peace of God calm your spirit. And you've got to ask God to put in your mouth, not the words of your flesh, but the words of the Spirit of God. And sometimes, here's a hard, big pill to swallow. It is hard to say, would you please forgive me? That's a tough thing to have to say. But I'm going to tell you, it takes a real Christian to say it. Amen. So going on to verse 4 and 5. I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers, having hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all saints. So Paul was telling Philemon, he says, you've demonstrated faithfulness towards God. You have love towards the saints of God. And forgiving is going to be just one more example of your growth as a believer. And honestly, forgiveness is a growth process of a believer. If you refuse to forgive, it really places your faithfulness and it places your love in jeopardy. It really sounds a horn that you're not what you say that you are. So it takes a real spiritual mature person to forgive someone even if you've been hurt to the depths of your soul. So when it comes to forgiveness, 
Honestly, your testimony and my testimony is at stake. If you are unwilling to forgive and you're holding a grudge and you say, well, I, I just, I can't get past it. I won't get over it. I, you know, I'll forgive them, but I, I just can't get past it. You haven't forgiven then. Because what you're doing, you're letting it control you. It gnaws at you. It eats at you. It pulls at you. It's on your mind every day. It's in every action and deed. And if you see the person, I mean to tell you what, all hell comes up in you. And, and we get in those positions. I'm going to tell you, that's not the picture that Christ paints of a Christian in his word. And I'm going to tell you, I'm dealing with some tough stuff here now. It's going to take real men and women today to get the message. Amen. If, you want, if you're still on the pablum of Christianity, you're not going to get this. You've got to get on the meats and, and the meat and the potato of this, man. I mean, you've got to get where, where it's at. So when it comes to forgiveness, your testimony is at stake. And if you refuse to forgive, it will hinder the growth of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Let me go quickly because, man, time is flying. A lack of forgiveness communicates that you want to receive God, you want to receive grace from God, but you are unwilling to give grace, the grace of God to other people. So we love God's grace, but why not give that grace to others? That's what forgiveness is really all about. We have been forgiven much, so we should always forgive much. So if, if you carry resentment towards others, can I make a bold statement? I'm going to do it anyway, whether I can or not. If you carry resentment towards others, you're not walking with God. You're not in the will of God. You're outside the will of God. Well, let's make it even more bolder. You're living in sin. You're not right with God. And God can't answer your prayers. Two points. A refusal, for, a refusal to forgive stops, stunts your spiritual growth. Point one. Point two. A refusal to forgive will keep you emotionally bound to the person who hurt you. You have locked a ball and chain around your foot and around their foot and y'all are dragging each other around. Amen. See, you can't be effective that way. So every time you think about the offense of un your unforgiveness, it ushers this stuff right back into your life. You know what? You carry a snapshot of that person around in front of you all the time. All the time. Because you will not forgive. Philemon 7, for we have great joy and consolation in thy love because of the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. There's a lot at stake here for Philemon. Forgiveness will always allow you to refresh or bring refreshing to others. Amen. Now, let me give you the third point. I'm through. Forgiveness is the evidence of grace. So forgiveness of others today is, is not what, it's not what makes you saved. But it demonstrates that we are saved. So, verse 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So, Paul was talking about relationship with other believers. So, when we follow Christ with other believers, it is effective its effectiveness then will help us to see our need to forgive. And I'm going to tell you, you know what your flesh is going to say? I, I, I'm not up to that right now, maybe later on. And you know what? Your flesh is never going to be up to it. That's where you either got to man up or woman up and step up and do what you got to do. Amen. It's not going to go away. It's not going to disappear into the sunset. It's going to be just as prevalent, if not more prevalent, tomorrow as it was today. Whether it was a week ago, a day ago, a year ago, or whenever it was ago, maybe it goes way back. Maybe you're in conflict with your family. I was talking to someone yesterday. I said, thank God, I can tell you, I don't have no conflict with any of my family folk. Amen. I, I tell you, man, I have been on a mission of Making sure my relationships are right with people. Amen. Amen. That doesn't mean I'm dying. It doesn't mean anything. It means I want to be, I want to make sure I'm right with God. Because I tell you what, I take my walk serious. I take my testimony serious. I take what I do behind this pulpit serious. And if I'm not right with God and right with others, if I'm not right with others, I can't be right with God. Amen. Amen. By the way, that goes for you too. Amen. Amen. 
Actually, the body of Christ teaches us how to forgive one another. God changes us internally as a result of what we, and we begin to look differently. What has happened on the inside shows evidence upon the outside of our life. Remember, in Christ, you have the ability to forgive. The heart of this prayer, what Paul is talking about here, is forgiving others is the evidence that we have received the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you got to put your flesh aside. And again, forgiving others is not what makes you saved. It's just a demonstration that you are saved. Evidence. May I use that word? Listen to the statement. You can't give away what you have not received. Amen. And if you've received the forgiveness, you know what God gave it to you for? To give it away. To share it with others. So forgiveness is releasing others from the obligation that has created or brought about bad behavior. The goal is to forgive the way God has forgiven us. Amen. I've heard those saying, we use it typically, a lot of people, a lot of times. You know, I treat people the way that I would like people to treat me. That's all wrong. You ought to treat people the way Christ treats people. Amen. Amen. So there's no loopholes in the Word of God. There's no ways out. God says it explicitly. And even if a person doesn't ask for forgiveness, you still forgive them. Amen. So the biblical thing to do is to forgive even if the person who's hurt you never repents of it. They've got to stand before God. Let us not forget God offers forgiveness to all people. So we should forgive even if the person does not even accept. I mean, you may go to a person and say, I really would like to get your forgiveness and get our lives straight. They may say, sorry, I don't want it. Stay away from me. Well, you've done the right thing. And that's all that's important. Actually, we should forgive even without confrontation at all. You should forgive. But I think it's important to confront. There, I'm going to give you a little statement here. Remember this. There will never be any peace without confrontation. And that's in everything. You've got to confront your sins. You've got to confront your issues. You've got to face things. You've got to deal with things in order to get to the place that you want. So when someone has hurt, has hurt you over something that is trivial, it's a lot of times it's nothing but trivial, drop it. We are are not spiritual enforcers. So forgive and move on with your life. Stop living in the dungeon of where you were at with this situation. Get out of it. So forgiveness does not mean that we forget what happened. I mean, we learn from those things. Sometimes it's hard to put the painful things of life out of our mind completely. But you've got to realize... This is the price that has been paid for a fallen world. Even though things come up, we remember, we can still forgive. But you really don't need to monopolize your mind with things that are happening. So let me just wrap all this up today by saying forgiving others means there are... You know, when you forgive, the consequences are gone. Now, God may allow consequences in your life. Even when we are forgiven, because sometimes we need that to get us to the place of maturity and growth. So here it is. They're anxious. They're like a bunch of wild folks out there. And that best of you are chomping at the bit to get in here. Should open the doors and let them hear what we're talking about. We'll do that next week. Amen. What's your time? Come on in and sit down. Hallelujah. I can throw a few more sentences that they can get something from, right? You bet. Amen. All right. Now they're listening. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just kidding. Forgiveness is the evidence of how we have grown in our faith. So, how spiritual mature are you today in forgiveness? Father, thank you today for the open hearts of your people to receive the word of God. You brought peace in this time of teaching this morning. And you're going to move on our hearts to even bring a greater peace. I just pray that, Lord, you'll be honored in all that we do. Now, we're here in this beautiful church today to worship you in spirit and in truth. That folks at the door waiting to get in here. And, Lord, we're going to just say thank you, Lord, for your blessings and let them get in here and get prepared to worship the Lord. Thank you for your blessings today. Thank you for this timeless subject today that we all need to hear. 
Thank you that you bless in all things today. And we say to God be the glory in Jesus' name. And what did all of God's children say? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a little hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs>